Hello, everybody. Howdy, everyone. If you're wondering where we're at, we have been at Fort Pickens Campground, and it is a part of the Gulf Shores National Islands. Gulf Islands National. It's part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore. So we've camped here before. We have some older, two older vlogs on it. We haven't been here in a, two years, so we're excited to share our new time here with you guys. We love it. We love this place. So last night I made mahi mahi tacos. They were delicious, and we got the fish at Maria's Seafood. So that was one of the first stops we do when we get here. And those tacos were so good. Guys, that mahi mahi. I mean, I know I'm sweating right now because it's hot. But, oh man, I gotta touch my forehead, they were that good. Yeah, I've actually never had mahi-mahi tacos that were that good before. I even told him because I've ordered them before at restaurants and they end up just not being good, but those, so good. And we also got shrimp, because Kelly's gonna be cooking. Uh, what am I cooking? Shrimp and grits. Oh, yeah. I with forgot. gulf shrimp. Yeah. This morning, she's just busting out her French toast. Yeah, I was kind of craving some French toast. The thing that we love about this beach, I mean, as you can tell, the campground is packed. It is really packed. But when you go to the beach, you can only park in designated parking spots. So because of that, it's very few people are out on the beach, hardly anyone. So you can have a whole entire section all to yourself. Yeah, the beach is very, very secluded. So like yesterday, there was nobody to the left of us for miles and miles, actually the whole stretch. And then there was like three people to the right of us, but they were spaced out pretty good. Now, if you go to just outside the National Park boundary, uh, At Pensacola Beach. Yeah, Pensacola Beach. It is bumper to bumper, people right on top of each other. But down here, you can't do that. Is it ready? Yeah. We're gonna eat breakfast because I think we're going back out to the beach today. Oh yeah, we're here for the beach. And we are gonna go make one stop because we're gonna do something I have never gotten to do before, and I'm pretty excited about it. This lady yesterday was doing it, and she told me I was gonna have my inner child come out. I'm looking forward to my inner child coming out. I feel like your inner child always comes out. Okay, maybe my inner child is always out. We finished our morning routine, packing up our canopy because we're going to head to the beach. We're going to make that other stop first to get something for Cody, well, for both of us to enjoy. But I want to show you guys our uh, platform build. If you missed that one, we just posted it a couple days ago. But this is with all of our stuff in it. I don't know if you can see here, we've got shoes shoved in there, first aid kit under the seat. We've got our water jugs. When we go on long trips, we carry the suitcase because we have a lot of clothes. So we have that sitting on top so we don't even have to take it out and put it in the tent. We can just open it and get what we need. And if we ever want to put the seats back in, all the bolts are still in place and the seats will be in storage. But this platform isn't just built for us to go travel cross country one trip. There's something really big about to happen and change in our lives. We're not ready to tell you guys yet, but we think you're going to love it. And there will be some information coming pretty soon on what's about to change in our lives. And we'll tell you then. So as you can see, if you look back here, it's opened it up quite a bit. Like you can see straight to the back. So we still have a lot of stuff, which we're having another plan for that as well. All in all, I think it's working out really well. But anyway, we're gonna head to the store. All right, y'all. What I have never done is flown a kite. And we just bought my first kite ever and we've bought a blue angels kite in honor of the blue angel planes that are mm -hmm. flying up and down the uh the beach yeah this is gonna be fun i haven't flown a kite in so long it was gonna be so much fun so you've flown a kite yeah when i was a kid me and my dad used to see my pops bought me a kite once and we lived in a tree neighborhood and uh it didn't turn out well but it is what it is and dad i'm not blaming you we just never went to a field of texture canada where we're from there wasn't a place to really fly a kite. We're entering back into the park, and once again, we're going to use our parks pass, and it, it's upside down. <laughs> and it actually expires this month for us. So when it says on the back, it has a stamp of what date it expires, and we were we actually didn't know if it was the beginning of the month or the end of the month, but you can use it all towards the end of the month. So we'll have to purchase a new one next time we go to another national park or monument or seashore. 
So anyway, but if you have one of these, you don't have to pay to get in. If you do not, I think it is $30 per vehicle. Well, once you pay the one-time fee, if you're camping, you don't have to pay again. They give you a little thing you put in your window and that way they know. So we're excited. We can't wait to fly a kite. This is going to be fun. I can't wait. I'm getting nervous, man. Cody is super excited, so he's getting the kite set up. He's just so excited about it. My inner kid, man, that lady was right. It's gonna be cool. I think we're ready. How cool does it look, guys? I think we're gonna call it a day here at the beach. We're both a little burnt, just a little bit, even though we've been applying sunscreen. But I think we're gonna go ahead and get cleaned up because we wanted to head to town over the bridge to Pensacola. We wanna go out to eat and I don't know, just piddle around a little bit, see what's in town. So we're gonna leave early because the bridge that takes you across, it only takes 30 minutes, is still under construction. So the route we have to take takes an hour and that's why we want to go ahead and get cleaned up to beat traffic. So we'll see you guys in town. Alright guys, we're ready to go into dinner but we got a little bit of a situation. Probably can't hear because the air's on blast. But the Hummer is missing. It's misfiring. So Cody thinks he knows what it is because of every couple of years he's got to replace it. So we've called O'Reilly's and we're going to head over there. And I don't know if we've ever sat in the past. We know, almost know where every O'Reilly's is. Yeah, I have been to America. almost every O'Reilly's that we've ever been to. Sorry, I got to turn. I have to talk to you a minute because it's hot. We shook all the way to O'Reilly's. It was like a 40 minute drive from where we were. Yeah. So Cody hooked up the, what is that called? Oh, it's a diagnostic tool. In this diagnostic tool, hook it up. O'Reilly's let you use it for free. Sometimes you gotta leave them your license. This tells you what's wrong. It's a cylinder four misfire, which is the same kind of code we've had in the past. So I'm thinking it's gonna be the ignition cool. So we're just gonna purchase one of those. Actually, I think I'm gonna get it for free because I have a lifetime warranty. So let's check hey. this out. Okay, guys. All right, so this is the Ignition cool in the very back. So this is number one up here. One, two, three, and then four is back here. And that's the one that it states that it's missing. That's it. Oh, it's hot. Okay. Now he's gotta go in, show him that he has the old one so we can see if we get the new one for free because of the warranty. So guys, this is an old original Cool pack, so it's not for free. Bad news, but gotta add a little contact greaser down in here. Make sure it has a good connection. Pop that on there. And what that's going on top of is the spark plug. I'm not gonna fully hook all this up, but what I am gonna do is just have you get in there and start okay let's test it i don't feel any vibration i think we're good is it good it's good. good it's good 
I still got to clear the code because the throw code is still going to be on. So I got to go get that and get myself clean. And Kelly was like, what are you going to wear? And I was like, some dirty clothes because I'm going to get dirty. Oh yeah, he's got his clean clothes. We have, we have all of our clothes with us. So this is why I always carry all my tools down there in this little socket set here just so I can be able to always have everything on hand to be able to work on my vehicle whenever I'm not home. Now let's go eat. So we arrived at our destination. I forgot the name of the restaurant. I'll figure it out when we get there, but Cody changed in the vehicle and now yeah, he yeah, is looking good. Yeah, I don't look like a mechanic anymore. So right now, the restaurant we left to left from is called South Market, and it is in downtown Pensacola. And we tend to visit downtown a lot. The buildings are original, historic, old buildings. I think it said that downtown was founded in 1559. We just passed the sign on the way up here, but everything is always so cute over here. And if you see right there, they have some of the original homesteads. And guys, there are some old, huge trees here the they are gorgeous so beautiful and all around this square is old old historical homes that have been transformed into businesses or restaurants like dharma blue so this right here is dharma blue this is another good restaurant they have sushi and all their kind of things to choose from but it's good as well but we're all stuffed and I think we're gonna make it back to the tent and lay down and go to sleep. We'll see y'all in the morning. See you in the morning. Good morning, y'all. I got up a little early this morning to go on a bike ride before the sun gets up, before it gets too hot. But I wanted to show y'all some of these old military fort features that are here. And in the spot I'm actually starting at, this was built in 1898. And right here was a giant cannon that used to sit there and would shoot projectiles out. And it was loud, but it was for defense against ships that were coming. Here's a cool little picture of it. Oh, and Kelly's still asleep right now. It's like six o'clock. She'll get up about eight, but check this out. So that is the object that used to sit inside there. It said the projectiles were 700 pounds and that they could be thrusted or shot as far as seven to nine miles out into the ocean or the Gulf. So that's, that's pretty neat to me, but this is actually in action here. A cool shot of it. This is cool because you can actually still walk up there. Let's go check it out. This is gorgeous, isn't it? But this trail keeps going.
I hope y'all enjoyed that little uh, bike ride I did over to the historical uh, bunkers. There's one that was built, the one with the cannons was built after 1812 because once they had the War of 1812, they realized that they needed, the U.S. realized that they needed to start defending their ports. It's really cool to visit, but the actual one I wanted to go visit and share with y'all is closed right now. I think I heard they were doing renovations. Yeah, that's what There's it was. some damage to it or something. So I can't even get in there to share it with y'all, so I just thought I would do is like that. Is that the one where you go in? Yeah. Oh. So I just thought I'd just share it, you know, the outside with y'all and let y'all enjoy it because I, I love that old stuff, but. Hi, good morning. And Kelly slept in. I did. I don't even know what time it is. Well, we've been getting up about 7.30, so it's about 8 now. Yeah, okay. Nice. This morning I'm making my hummus toast because we love it so much. It's so good. If you haven't tried it yet, you really need to. It's healthy, and it just honestly tastes like the flavor is kind of like a donut. I don't know. It's, it's not a donut, but it's weird. It's sweet. So today is our last day at the beach, which I would say I'm sad, but I'm really not sad. We were both saying this morning that we're kind of like done, I guess you could say. I think three three days is enough for us because it's just hot and I just recommend I would come earlier in the year. This is the last week of May, so. But we're gonna go enjoy the beach one last day. It actually feels great on the beach, so let's hit it. Guys, I have not told y'all how cool a little topic is or a little geographical topic is. These sands, you ready to look at them again? Check it out, look how white they are. Dubbed some of the whitest sands in the world uh, for a beach or the whitest beaches in the world. I know there's a ton of white beaches like in Australia as well, but still guys, this is pretty darn white. And do you wanna know what this is made of? Y'all ready? It's made of quartz. And guess where most of this quartz came from? The Washita Mountains. Oh yeah. Got a little piece of Arkansas here in Florida. Is that not crazy to think about? Like when we were on Lake Washita last weekend, if y'all noticed, most of the rock that was being washed up on the little uh, bank was white. It's a lighter material, so it goes to the surface. Heavier materials settle. Well, quartz is a pretty light material, so it settles in these beaches and gets pushed up since it's lighter. The heavier materials actually settle to the bottom beneath all this sand in its different colors, but this quartz material sits on top. Isn't that just cool? I can't get away from Arkansas, guys. Can't. back at camp and Kelly is about to cook her shrimp and grits 
with some fresh golf caught from there, just a stone's throw away, shrimp. I am so hungry. We haven't eaten since the hummus toast that she made for breakfast. So we got our shrimp. And babe, do you need the bacon? Yep. She needs her bacon. What else do you need? Shrimp, bacon, and that's it. All right, Angel. Bacon. I don't need shrimp just yet. We're gonna get warm out here. Bye, my job. So like I said, I'm making shrimp and grits and I'm just gonna walk you guys through it real quick. I'm gonna fry a couple pieces of bacon. I've got four, you could do two, you could do three, just to your liking. What I'm gonna do is let this fry and this will be crumbled on the top in the shrimp and grits. So it's not really the main focus of the dish, but it is like a, it brings that extra taste, that flavor of uh, bacon. All right, bacon's almost done. And the reason I'm letting it get a little bit more crispier is because I've got to, you know, break it up so it's like bacon crumbles. That's what you want. Our bacon's done. Probably too done. I'm going to turn this heat down just a little bit. And with that bacon grease in there, I'm going to take about one cup of corn. And if you can get frozen corn or you can just get canned. I like the can. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit. So the goal with the corn is to cook it about 10 minutes or so until it's golden brown on each side. Kinda hard to tell when it's in bacon grease, but you know, we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm gonna let my bacon cool and I'm gonna crumble that. I've got two cups of my favorite stock. Imagine brand. I'm gonna pour it in here. Guys, if you can't tell, the sun has really gotten to her. Yeah, I'm very tired. Very tired. Two cups of half and half. And we're going to pour that in the same pot here. This is the pot that I'm going to be making the grits with here. I'm going to go ahead and I think it's cooled off, crumble my bacon. So I just like to put it in the paper towel and just mash it all up. So once the corn's done, I'm going to put it on the same plate as the bacon. Just a safe space. While I'm waiting on the corn, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my broth in half and half to a boil. I'm going to do one cup of the cornmeal. And this is a good cornmeal. I love this brand, Bob's Red Mill. I get a lot of their products and I've never seen the cornmeal, so I was so excited to get that. Bob looks pretty cool, doesn't he? I hope to look like that when I'm Bob's age. All right, so I'm thinking my corn is pretty good. So I'm gonna try to not get the grease in there. We're gonna save that for the next next ingredient, which would be the shrimp that I'm gonna cook in this dish here. So I'm just gonna place that back on the burner. I've turned the burner off, but I've got my corn here. I've got one shallot here, so I'm going to chop that up very finely. All right, we have this chopped up pretty good. Whoa. This has come to a boil. We're going to put our grits. Grits are going to go in. All right, so once you get the grits in, you want to stir really well with a whisk. I've got my burner on on the skillet there. I'm going to add in two tablespoons of butter and let that melt. I have two green onions, and I am going to slice those up as well. We've got the shallot and the green onion, and we're going to put that into the skillet with the butter. On our grits, I believe they're done, so I'm going to add two more tablespoons of butter to the grits. So let that melt. Our vegetables are done, so I'm going to throw in the shrimp. And then after I put it in there, I'm also going to season it with Cajun seasoning. 
got some butter melted and I'm gonna throw in some Colby Jack cheese. So this is done. We're just gonna let it all melt together here. I'm also gonna throw my corn in with the grits. So in my grits, I do not add any salt or pepper. If you feel like you need to taste it and add it, feel free to. But just the fact that we use the bacon grease on the corn, you really it really doesn't need it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But if you wanna add it as extra flavor, you can also do that. Looks like our shrimp are done. So I have some heavy cream and I'm gonna add that in. And I don't really measure it out. I just kind of put some in there, stir it around, check the consistency. I'm also going to add in my bacon at this point. And I'm going to give it a whirl. Turn up the heat so we can kind of get the sauce to thicken a little bit. Once the sauce is thickened, um, you can tell maybe, you know, I like a creamy sauce, so I might want to add a little bit more cream, or you might want to start with a little less if you don't really like the creamy sauce. But to me, that kind of gives it with the shrimp and grits. You want that sauce to drizzle on top of it. So that's what I'm going to go for here. I'm going to let it thicken, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, I'm going to say it is done. You missed it, but I did add more sauce. The longer it sits there, the thicker and creamier it gets, but I'm going to go ahead and build our first plate. So these grits make a lot of grits. So we like to have at least two helpings, so I do a small portion first. And you really don't even need a spoon for that sauce. It just come on up. That's how thick it got. It doesn't really take long at all. We are ready. I'm so excited. Everybody. Good morning. We've already packed up all our stuff and we decided we're gonna go get a bite to eat breakfast before we head out on our journey home. And we have our little diffuser going. I don't know if I showed you guys oh, yeah. this, <laughs> but this is my diffuser. <laughs> it's so small, but it is powerful. I only do one drop. If I mix oils, I do one drop of each, but it really works. It I think she's gonna so kill good. me, guys. She's gonna it kill me. It smells so good. It's her world and I'm just living in it. Anyway, I had to share that little diffuser with y'all. I got that on Amazon and I'll put the link below for you. It plugs into your USB port. How cool is that? Actually, the cool part is that it has multi-colors. Yeah, it does change. It has LED colors at night you can change it to. But yeah, it's really cool. You can put it in the tent. So with the Jackery, we can take it put it in the tent with the Jackery. Yeah, I just have to have my old stuff. Anyway, we're about to head over to Pensacola, and it looks like today the bridge is open. Did we tell them that it was closed? You can tell them the story about how... So, uh, the bridge, the three-mile bridge to get over here has been closed since the hurricane. Not because of hurricane damage, a bar, a runaway barge, hit the bridge. So, to get over here, it usually takes about 30 minutes. This took an extra hour, so it took an hour and a half the other night when we went to dinner. Wow. Um, but it is fixed today, so yay! It won't take us long, and we're gonna head over to Pensacola, and we'll see y'all at breakfast. Pensacola and we're gonna eat breakfast at this little cafe. I think it's called Palazzo Cafe. So let's go check it out.
saying goodbye to Pensacola. We're gonna miss it. It was a great, great time. We had a good time. Always love the beach. Always yeah. love it. Gotta get it in there. It almost feels like a second home because we've mm -hmm. actually been here so many times before we even started vlogging. We just really missed it because we didn't get to come last year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But even though we're leaving here, we have so many other plans for the future and we're gonna be going so many other places. So I'm we're excited. Pretty, we're pretty excited to tell you guys uh, the future, probably next week on next week's vlog. Yeah, we'll let you guys know. Next we'll let week. you know. If you like this vlog, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on the other.